my heart get ready. Fantasy football is here. Welcome to the Full-Time Fantasy Show. FullTimeFantasy.com is home to the Fantasy Football World Championships and the best players in the world. Real money winners giving their secrets to help you win. Now exclusively on iHeart. This is the Full-Time Fantasy Show with your host, the one, the only, Dr. Roto. Dr. Roto, get out the insurance cards, get out the copay. The office is open, my friends. All right, we'll get to some news, we'll get to some notes, we'll get to yesterday's games, and we'll preview tonight's titanic struggle between the Steelers and the Dolphins. Okay, there was a trade. We knew this was going to happen. Kenyon Drake didn't make the trip to Pittsburgh because we knew the Dolphins were trading him, and they did. They traded him to the Arizona Cardinals for a six-round pick. So, why did they do that? Here's why. David Johnson's injured. Chase Edmonds injured. Injured. All right? A hamstring, as we saw with Devin Singletary, could be three weeks to six weeks. I'm not saying Chase Edmonds is going on the IR, but I'm saying yeah, it's not, not looking too good for him. David Johnson hasn't played well at all. And I think the Cardinals are slightly delusional when they think to themselves, you know, we actually have a chance. You don't have a chance. You're not that good. But Kenyon Drake is decent. And what did you give up? A six-round pick? Probably worth it. Maybe next year you go with Edmonds and Drake. You get rid of David Johnson. You do what you got to do and move on. So I don't have a, I don't have a problem with the deal. But, don't go too in on Drake. I'm going to tell you why. It's all about scheduling. So let me see if I can get it for you here. If I check the Cardinals schedule, if I'm not mistaken, right? Two of their next three games. Are you ready? San Francisco, Tampa, San Francisco. The two hardest run defenses in the NFL. So, they need a guy who can catch the ball out of the backfield. That's Kenyon Drake. Because you're not going to be able to run at all against those teams. Just not. I mean, if you're not named Derrick Henry, you're not running. So it makes sense in that way. Would I play Drake? Sure, in a PPR league, you can play in the next two weeks. I think the biggest beneficiary in this trade is Mark Walton. He was the guy I told you to stash how long ago? Told you to get Mark Walton. I told you Kenyon Drake was gone. And I told you Walton was the guy. And you know what? Walton has looked very good. He has. He looks explosive. He's certainly the guy for the end of this year. Will he go be next year? I don't think so. But you certainly could ride the the Mark Walton wave this year. I mean, use him in as many leagues as you can. Okay? Moving forward, he's a starter. Simple as that. Unless you got four great running backs. But who has four great running backs in today's day and age? All right. J.J. Watt out for the season with a torn pectoral. It's so hard to see that. He's such a good guy, and he's such a good player that you never, ever want to see anything like that happen to him. So whether you like the Texans or not, you have to appreciate J.J. Watt. I do. I think you have to appreciate J.J. Watt. So sad to see. All right, let's start breaking down the games, the Jets against the Jaguars. If you weren't concerned about Sam Darnold last week, you better be concerned now. Three more interceptions... They're throwing the ball to Demarius Thomas. They're not getting the ball in their hands of Robbie Anderson and Jamison Crowder. What is going on here? I've said this before and I'll say it again. If the Miami Dolphins, who stink, didn't want Adam Gase as their coach, why would you want to pick him up, Jets? How does that make sense? Oh, yeah, Gase was let go. He was really good. No, he wasn't. I mean, you can't even use Le'Veon Bell. Guy got 12 touches. Come on. It's terrible. Terrible for the Jaguars, Gardner Minshew. He deserves to start somewhere. Maybe it's not in Jacksonville. That's true. Maybe it's Nick Foles. But Gardner Minshew is legit. If if I'm the Cincinnati Bengals, I would rather have Gardner Minshew right now than Andy Dalton. How about that? All right. D.D. Westbrook leaves the game with an injury. D.J. Chark is the bomb. And Chris Conley is the bomb. And now you got to go pick Conley up this, this week. You have to. All right? We'll talk about that more tomorrow. 
But if D. Westbrook is out, Conley's in. Simple. All right, the Chargers and Bears. I mean, this is such a joke. This is literally a joke. The Chargers are not very good. Melvin Gordon can, made one good run in the entire game. How do you not get the ball in the hands of Austin Eckler? Five times he touches the ball. Seriously. I mean, this is terrible. Now, speaking of terrible, the Chargers run defense. I told you this. David Montgomery ran for 135 yards and a touchdown. I told you to start him. Did I not? The Chargers run defense. Horrific. Next week, they get the Packers. Load up on Aaron Jones and Jamal Williams. Please, do me that favor. I'm going to see those guys run amok. The only team worse than the Chargers are the Bears. And to Mitch Trubisky's credit, at least he brought him down the field for the winning field goal. But Mitch Trubisky's terrible. Just want to throw that out there. In case you were wondering, if ask yourself, if you were asking yourself, is Mitch Trubisky terrible? The answer is yes. All right, the Titans and Bucks. I mean, Jameis Winston, dude, you just make bad plays. I mean, you're blaming. So let, take a look at the very last play of the game. That tells me everything I need to know. He's angry at Brashad Perriman. Why are you throwing the ball to Brashad Perriman? You've got Cameron Bray, you've got Chris Godwin, you've got Mike Evans, and you're going to throw the ball to Brashad Perriman? What kind of stupidity is that? I mean, terrible. Ronald Jones is awful. Peyton Barber is awful. I mean, they literally have Evans and Godwin and Jameis, who puts up numbers no matter what. Horrible to watch, but he puts up numbers. Ryan Tannehill didn't need to do that much because they got so many turnovers, there wasn't a lot of yardage. So when you look at it, he did have three touchdown passes. And kudos to Derrick Henry for gaining 75 yards rushing against a very good Tampa defense. But Jonu Smith was terrific. Where was Corey Davis? Where was A.J. Brown? A.J. Brown had the one touchdown, but they killed people. Killed them. Jonu was great. The rest trash. Titans 4-4. Four and four. Maybe they're making a run. All right, the Seahawks and Falcons. So if you own Russell Wilson and you're upset, I get it. 14 for 20, 182 yards, two touchdowns. But they were winning 24 0 at halftime. It's second half. Do you really need Russell Wilson to throw the ball? You know you're winning, right? You know you're winning. So why would you want this guy to get hurt? You just give it to Carson, you give it to Penny, you just keep on running the ball. Makes sense. By the way, go watch the, the highlights of DK Metcalf's two touchdowns. I've never seen anybody more open in the history of mankind. I, the Falcons have to fix everything. Literally everything. This team is terrible. Defensively, terrible. You have no chance of winning in the NFL when that's what your defense looks like. And by the way, isn't Dan Quinn a defensive guy? Just throwing it out there. All right. Kudos to Adam Ronis for calling the Philadelphia Eagles to smash the Bills. He was 100% right. I know it was bad weather, and that was uh, that hurt fantasy stats, a lot of wind in that game. But let me tell you something about the Bills here. The Eagles' pass defense played better than anybody expected. And secondly, let's get the ball to Devin Singletary. Stop with Frank Gore. Give the ball to Singletary. He's that good. I mean, he had the one touchdown reception. I mean, that guy looked like a star. So did you ask yourself, why am I not seeing more of him? They need to. Five and two, you should be making the playoffs. Give the ball to Singletary. John Brown couldn't do enough in this game because of the wind. Beasley should have gotten more involved. Just my opinion on that one. For the Eagles, man, they just ran that football. Jordan Howard running that football. Miles Sanders doing it, running and catching. He looked good in spots. But Howard is the, is the battering ram in that offense. Carson Wentz spreading the ball around. Zach Hurts. I mean, you drafted Zach Hurts. You can't be happy right now. You can't be. Okay. The Lions are really an improved team. They're 3-3-1. Three, three, and one, But I got to tell you, I, I think they should be much better than that. I, I'd be, I think they should be close to like 6-2. and two. I think they're that good. Or 6-1. I, I think they, they, they could should have beaten the Packers. Should have beaten the Cardinals. They played well this year. This new offense is so much better without Carrion Johnson. And I like Carrion Johnson. I love me some Carrion Johnson. But their offense is better without him. 
because now they're, sh they're throwing these short passes. Amendola, Galladay, Marvin Jones, Ty Johnson, right? McKissick. That's where they're better off. Hawkinson. They're not a run team. See, that was the problem. They were a run-based team, but they really weren't. They're a short passing team. That's what they really are. Matt Stafford needs to throw the ball. He's looked tremendous. I'm going in on him if he's available in any leagues. And I'm in on Danny Amendola, too. For the Giants, look, they need Sterling Shepard so badly. But Slayton played well until the Lions were like, hold on. This guy beat us twice. That's the end of him. Golden Tate did his damage. But Daniel Jones, can I tell you something? In, in that, that game where they beat the Buccaneers where he ran for that touchdown, he looked great. Since then, he doesn't run the ball that much anymore. There are they're, they're open lanes that he's not running through. Who got to him? I mean, maybe he's not the most mobile guy in the world, but you could run a little more. All right. Let, let's look at the Saints for a second. They literally have two players. Latavius Murray and Michael Thomas. And when Murray's not, when, when Alvin Kamara's there, it's Alvin Kamara. How do they win games literally with two fantasy players? Two. The core, I'm sorry, three. Drew Brees, the running back and the receiver. They don't need a second receiver. They don't need a tight end. They don't need anything. They have a good defense. That's all they need. It's unreal. That shows you good coaching. If you started Chase Edmonds, I am sorry. I'm not going to tell you that this wasn't expected. I didn't expect them to have a huge day against the Saints, but I expected more than three points. I did. But now you're going to see him. I don't know how much more you're going to see him the rest of the year. But I do like Christian Kirk. He's back. Eight for 79. Really good to see that. Missed him. Missed him big time. All right. If you listen to my podcasts, who did I tell you was going to have a good game in the Broncos Colts game? I know I told you, Marlon Mack. I hope you were listening. I'm listening. I'm literally watching the NFL NFL channel, and I'm not. I don't want to call people out, but I will. Fabiano's on there with Cynthia Freeland, and they are talking about how how T. Y. Hilton is going to have 20 fantasy points. What are they thinking? How are they? How is T. Y. Hilton possibly going to have 20 fantasy points when Chris Harris is covering him? And that's just that's just bad. That's why you're here. That's why you're listening to this podcast because I break it down for you. Most of these guys don't know what they're talking about. They get these big jobs on NFL Network. They get jobs on ESPN. Come on. We've been winning leagues together, you and I, for how long now? Years. Years. Okay, here's what happened. The Colts met a team that's playing very well right now. Denver's defense is much better than it's ever been. Playing at a very high level. The Colts were just a little better. And... That was a really, really dumb horse collar penalty on Johnson at the end of that game against T.Y. Hilton. T.Y. had that one big reception, and then the horse collar, boom, and then all of a sudden it was a field goal. That was dumb. You lose games on that. Shame on the Broncos. They deserve to win that game. Good job by Brissett for maintaining his composure. Okay, if you own Robert Woods right now, you're probably losing your composure as we speak because you can't bear it that Brandon Cooks left the game and Robert Woods went two for 36. Here's the problem. Cooper Cup is Jared Goff's guy. I said it before and I'll say it again. If Cooper Cup was in the Super Bowl, you might have had a different result. Cooper Cup is a beast, epically, and honestly, he's a second round pick next year. That's how good he is. If I'm picking 12-13, I am not afraid of taking Cooper Cup. I might not do it, but I'm not afraid to do it. Uh, Gurley scored. Henderson was an easy one because you knew they were going to be winning by a lot. And I don't know if he needed his 49 yards and, you know, 20 yards receiving, but that was there. Joe Mixon, though, Joe Mixon played well. As we said, he would on the radio show. I mean, just when you think Joe Mixon sucks, he plays well against the Rams. Unreal. Unreal. Can't play well against Jacksonville, but he can play well against them. I am so impressed with the 49ers right now. Jimmy Garoppolo didn't have to do anything. 18 for 22, 175 yards and two touchdowns because they are running the ball like champs. I know Bride is not 100%, but Mostert is a beast. Jeff Wilson's there, and Tevin Col Coleman can't be stopped. I've never seen a team not stop him. And interestingly enough, Debo Samuel looked great. Emmanuel Sanders looked great. 
Kittle look great. They didn't even have to do that in anything. Just wait. This team is very balanced. Debo Samuel's a good player, and Sanders was a great pickup. The 49ers are in a good spot to win. That's why John Lynch went to Stanford, baby. Speaking of Stanford, Christian McCaffrey is so good. Now look, I am not a Cam Newton kind of guy. But you're never winning this game with Kyle Allen. I mean, literally, you're never winning this game with Kyle Allen. So say what you want about Cam Newton. They may have, they're, they're going back to him because they did not win this game. Didn't even come close. Speaking of coming close, I think the Browns were a lot better than you think. That game was decided by bad plays. Baker Mayfield's horrific interception where he literally threw the ball right into the hands of Lawrence Guy. One. Nick Chubb's fumbling. Two. You take those things away, the Browns were close. They were closer than you think. And here's what I saw. They ran the ball against New England. Is New England soft against the run? I don't know. They might be. Just throwing it out there. They might be. How good is Julian Edelman? He's so good, and he's so underrated. He really is. All right, finally, the Packers against the Chiefs. It was a really good Sunday night game. you got to give the Chiefs a lot of credit. There was no Patrick Mahomes, but Matt Moore did a great job. He really did. He kept them in that game. They just weren't as good. They couldn't find the receivers, couldn't find Watkins, couldn't find Kelsey, couldn't find Hill at the end of the game. And that was the difference. Oh, and Aaron Jones was the difference. Please, fantasy gods, please let Aaron Jones play more. He is so good, I don't understand why they don't go to him more. I know Jamal Williams is involved. I get that. But Aaron Jones is a stud of epic proportions. All right, tonight's game, Miami against Pittsburgh. You start James Conner. You start Juju. Okay? Those guys you start for sure. I don't know how I feel about Deontay Johnson. I don't know how I feel about Vance McDonald. I think I'm a little worried about them. I'm a little worried about them because I don't know. I think they're going to be up by a lot, and they may not need to use them. So I'm all in on Juju. I'm all in on Connor. The other guys, I'm questioning about. For Miami, I like Mark Walton, but the Steelers have a good run defense. I like Preston Williams, but you know the Steelers play well at home. So I, I, I don't know. Be careful tonight. There's really nobody I'm dying to play outside of James Conner and Juju. So hopefully you don't need more than that. Okay? But right now it's time to put away the insurance card, put away the copay. The office is closed, my friends. Remember, check out FullTimeFantasy.com. Enter the promo code ROTO50 for 50% off your first two months. I have my prescription notes up, and you'll want to take a look at them. All right, guys. Good luck tonight if you need it. This is Dr. Roto saying be well and take care. Thanks for listening to Full-Time Fantasy. There's never been a better time to join and go full-time. Visit FullTimeFantasy.com. Use the promo ROTO50 for 50% off your first two months. And don't forget, fantasy players, please thumbs up the podcast on the iHeart app. See you next time.